Actually, this is the seventh in a series of talks that we've done with artists since uh, February, when Art and Language gave a talk, and since then, Ryan Gander, Rodney Graham. Uh, all of the talks are on our website or um, Facebook or things like that, so do catch up with them if you'd like to. But today, uh, our star attraction is Hussein Shalaya. Welcome, Hussein. Very Thank pleased. You. Thank you for the show that you've given us. Thank you for coming today. Uh, Hussein Scott. Another project that just opened last night at uh, Spring Projects in North London, uh, showing older work but presented in a, in a new way. So he's been very busy with that and very busy, obviously, with um, your next collection, which opens in Paris in, what, two weeks' time? Yeah. So great that you could come today. Very warm welcome also to Penny Martin. Uh, I met Penny about six years ago um, when you were the brilliant editor of the show <laughs> studio, uh, Nick Knight's online magazine. Editor of the brilliant show studio. <laughs> Both. And um, what you left about a year ago That's to right. pursue um, academic work at the London College of Fashion yes. and also to be the founding editor of the Gentlewoman magazine, which uh, issue two is coming out. It's out, I think, today. It's out yeah. out today. So, mm. so um, we're going to talk a little bit, ask some questions. Hussein's going to answer with insight and wit, and uh, then we're going to open up the discussion uh, with everybody. And we will stick to an hour so people can get on with their Fridays. So I might just start by asking something, Hussein, not about art and not about fashion, but about music. Uh, music is obviously crucial to this piece here, and it's crucial to your work in the past. You've used musical scores, you've used uh, Balkan singers, you've used uh, heavy metal guitar bands, uh, in some way or another woven into the presentations of your work. And it's kind of interesting because music is obviously, unlike most art and unlike most fashion, it's uh, immaterial, there's nothing physical, nothing there. So can you say something about that relation between music as a cultural presence and music as a immaterial cultural expression, and why, why you're so interested in it? Mm -hmm. Well, um, throughout all the presentations we've been doing um, in the years, uh, I've tried to always incorporate live music because I always wanted our shows to be a cultural experience rather than just fashion shows. And um, the sort of correlation between sound and choreography and uh, the atmosphere for me was always uh, really important in terms of what, what kind of feelings I was trying to evoke. Uh, so for me, um, music is always, you know, it's, it's, it's an, you know, a crucial ingredient because it can really alter the way in which you perceive something. Um, and I always felt really very simply that um, all aesthetic people try to create ultimately the same feeling as what a sound can, or what piece of music uh, tries to do. And I always think of our visual people as sort of poor man's musicians in a way. And um, it's because, you know, we thrive to create the same impact, but it can't quite get there. We're kind of tied down to the ground in some way. Exactly. Because I think the immediacy of sound and the, and the power of it um, and the physical connection to it um, I made another project um, years ago called Echoform, which was all about that, um, about how we amplify the, the construction of the body and the way the, you know, we are designed in a way, and sound is a big part of it. And um, so for me, it's, it's sort of a, uh, an extension of the body, really. And um, I don't, I, I see it, and I, sometimes I think of the violin as like the the sort of the veins in the body or something. I, I find it very bodily somehow. So this particular work that you made for this space uh, was inspired by and totally built around a song. Can you say something about that song and where it came from? Of course. Um, well, I've always, um, you know, as a child, listened to Turkish classical music. It's a big part of our culture. Um, actually, um, I never really um, liked it that much as a child, but um, as I grew up, I started to really understand the different influences that, you know, that's, that kind of, um, 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 that you can see if you analyze, let's say, and uh, I thought that it really said a lot about the region we come from. Um, it's completely a hybrid region, and in a way, a lot of my work is about uh, looking at those, uh, looking at the sort of the nuances within the hybrids, let's say. And um, I think this piece of music, it really, I mean, that genre of music generally, uh, you can really uh, sort of dive deep into it and really see where each bit comes from. So, again, because of, the, um, of my interest in, in these hybrids, it was, it was sort of a, a musical way of doing that again. 
Um, and uh, this piece was um, written for an Egyptian film called Leila and Mejnun in 1940 uh, by a Turkish composer. And, um, and uh, so it, it, was, it, it felt to me like, again, it was something of the past that went through, we heard it only as Turkish classical music. You only know about the people, only people who, who um, are from my generation that doesn't really know about that era of films. So again, I, um, it was about the sort of the shifts that it had gone through and, and to present it in a London gallery for me was like a new shift, let's say, because really for me what art does most of the time is it sort of frames things that already exist. And I see a gallery as a sort of frame, let's say, of some, you know, because often I think I frame things that already exist as well. And it's a case of like um, creating a new way of looking at it, perhaps, or even focusing on it, maybe more than you would have normally. What about um, casting the person or the kind of vehicle to sing it? Uh, can you say something a little bit about that? Because I suppose that's something that you're used to doing in your fashion work too. Well, this singer, Sertab Erener, she's actually just a well-known pop singer and with a, you know, classical voice. She's had a classical training. And what's the equivalent? Is she kind of the Kylie? What's, what, who is she? It's really hard to compare. Um, I think um, kind of, but not. Not really. There, there are other Kylies, I think. There. I so, think it's like a 1995, something like that. A bit. Kathy she's Dennis. Young. Maybe. I don't know. It's really hard to say because... Um, you know, she, she's been around for a while, and I thought she was quite an unlikely person to go for because she doesn't sing this genre of music. Really, it's the oldies that sing the, this genre of music, mm. um, some of whom are deceased already. So she seemed like, uh, because she's got classical training, um, I thought also that, um, you know, she kind of looks interesting as well. So I don't know if it was instinctive, really. And... Um, in a way, it was a shift as well, because she isn't from that genre of music. So that was a, again, I guess, um, I enjoyed uh, creating a new context, you know, sort of con putting her into a new context as well. So uh, and it was a challenge for her as well, because it was not the kind of music that you can perform just like that. And I think she really dived into it and studied, and, uh, and at the end, I think she was great. But I remember in the beginning, she was nervous about doing it. And are those the kinds of clothes that she would wear? Is that what she looks no like to perform? No way. I mean, it, it was, um, it, again, it, it was to try and create, you know, that was a, on purpose too, to sort of give her another um, complete different look. So, um, in a way, because all my work is connected, uh, like the, I think that really the figures you see in, in our shows are the same figures you see in our films. And even the people who are there transforming stuff is the same people. So it's all part of the same world. So I, want, I like the idea of her connecting to one of my collections as well, but it was you know, performing this new piece. Because, of course, we've seen you perform as part of your shows too. <laughs> Hardly a performance, just guitar. But is it different? Are you imagine, do you have to inhabit that person, do you, or do, do, are you projecting onto that person? Um, it's an interesting question. I think it's, it's probably more a projection, but it's not... Um, I, I think that I try to create ingredients, really, for a project, and it really acquires its own life. And I think, see myself as the sort of orchestrator of that mini life. It kind of becomes like a micro-geography, in a way. And I think that so when I cast someone like Serta and we you know, create this piece, it is a part fantasy, part reality scenario, but really, ultimately, the piece picks up its own life, and that's what I really enjoy, uh, when something goes beyond me, and it, it's sort of a projection, but it's, I can't say that it's um, a projection of myself. I think it's an idea, and hopefully it will become its own world. Picking up on the point about the, the costume that uh, you chose for set up to wear. Um, do you remember when we talked about this over yeah. some months? Uh, I was quite surprised when that came up because of the original discussion about the piece and the context. And so I thought that it would be more kind of ethnic, more folkish, somehow mm -hmm. more tied into the origins of the song. And it's very interesting that you chose that. I, you know, what's this about? Um, mm -hmm. But it, it's much more interesting because it's much less literal. And it's, um, also, you were describing earlier that it's giving it a kind of I don't know, a Riviera 50s look, mm -hmm. somehow trying to 
extend the, the range of associations? Well, for a start, the, the song is a Turkish classical piece. It's not a folk song, for a start. So that's obviously what one, you know, one so thing. The origin is in a sort of fable, isn't it? It's, it's in a fable, but not the song. Uh, the actual story is, um, perhaps, but not the actual uh, genre of music. It's a folk song. Folk genre is a whole other thing in Turkish music, and it's very Balkan connected yeah. and everything. So normally what happens is that um, when we, we grew up watching, when I was growing up in Cyprus, we got the Turkish TV. And you would have this very sort of, um, in a way, regimented um, kind of nation state type of um, choreography uh, in black and white. And it would be like these Turkish singers would be really glamorously dressed, but it would, it would be studio, uh, it would be in a studio in Ankara. So it felt very sort of, um, let's say, institutional. Mm. Like and Bruce Forsyth. Sorry? Like a, a, a command performance for the, for the, is it kind of like watching the, I, now I can't remember the title of it, but For the Queen, a sort of um, orchestrated piece of kind of it's, culture, is it more highbrow than that? I, I think it's, um, well definitely uh, there are all these different intonations in the music, so there, there's, there is a sort of specialist area, and, but yes, uh, generally the presentations yeah, were, were not quite like For the Queen, but I would say there was a sort of very, um, you know, they, they were to kind of uh, raise sort of um, collective emotion in a way, mm -hmm. but it was presented in a very regimented manner, and I was fascinated by that. And in, initially, that's what I wanted to do, to actually film it in that way. But it looked really, didn't look right, so I changed the lighting during the piece. But it was really, and the costumes in those pieces were often very kind of glamorous. And again, I think a lot of people who, who don't know about Turkish culture who can't imagine that. So you really have to be Turkish to really know. I mean, even her moves with her hand is very classical because we shot her also in, in a sort of Hussein style, which was very kind of androidish. They just didn't look right. So we asked, I asked her to use all the classical moves as well. So it's a very local thing in a way. And that's why I thought it was very nice to put it into this context. Um, and the outfit isn't at all, uh, it's from a collection, and there was a sort of part anatomical kind of feel to it as well, but it was very classical at the same time, like, like Greg was saying, quite a Riviera type feel, because it's from a collection uh, that I did earlier, yeah. which was all about that. Mm. Um, so uh, it was just, again, how, how can I put it, like um, really an am amalgamation of let's say, quite foreign ingredients. Um, well, then, you, you mentioned about everything being interrelated and, and there being Hussein themes, but for, maybe for someone that, that's here that thinks they know your work but would like to know more, let's kind of t unpack that a little bit more. Sure. Um, you talk, we, we talked about the fact that there's a, a national identity and sort of vernacular cultures and hybridity and duality and all these kinds of things that obviously fascinate you. Um, and I just wondered what the circumstances of uh, this show and also um, the show at uh, Spring Studios was. Do you think there's a sort of timeliness? Is it an important, is this just something that's, that's come up at this time or why do you think this has happened now, this kind of Hussein domination of London? Oh my God, I don't see myself as a domin, my goodness. Um, honestly, I've been doing this kind of work for years and years and years and um, I think that uh, my feeling is that the art world often doesn't acknowledge designers as, I mean, let's say, on quite the same level. But I sometimes think that design could actually have more critical value, you know, at times. And I think that it's to do with this, um, I think it's to do with, let's say, that if, I guess my work is getting a bit more noticed mm -hmm. by different worlds. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a lot to do with the Design Museum show last year, okay. um, where we showed a real broad spectrum of my work. So one room would be a film, next room would be just one dress, mm -hmm. and then another room would be something else. Mm -hmm. And I think that this was really, I think that did a lot of good in a way to show my world. And that show then went to the Modern Museum in Tokyo, and then it's now in Istanbul Modern. So it's quite a... I think there was a lot of excitement around it, and it was a really fantastic opportunity for me to show everything that, you know, that I've developed throughout the years. I think it's to do with, uh, you, you know, I guess um, it's, just, it's just been the exposure. But really, um, I've been making films since the end of the 90s, mm -hmm. and, um, I, I, you know, it was very connected to my, my shows. They were really the extension of the shows. So, like I said, like all the characters you see in the film or in the show, they're really the same people for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, 
I don't know. Come in because the question, I guess, could also be addressed to the people invited to say to do the 